Hello, and welcome to worship at Prescott United Methodist Church. Whether you're joining us from town, across Arizona, around the nation, or throughout the world, we're glad that you're here with us today. A couple of announcements to lift up for you today. Uh, first, we have our All Church Conference coming up on December 3rd. If you have information that we need for that, please get it into the office. We're soliciting devotions for our Advent devotional. Uh, the theme this year is What the World Needs. Again, please get those into the office. We will be having Holy Communion again next week. If you wish to join us from home, we will have the elements available out in the map box, that little white box in front of the sanctuary. Uh, please come by anytime Monday through Friday to pick those up. And also, um, we have an equal exchange sale coming up on Monday. So that will be a drive through sale for uh, equal exchange coffee, tea, or everyone's favorite chocolate uh, from 10 till noon on Monday the 26th. Uh, and we also are lifting up our special offering this week, which is the End Project and Reverend Ephraim is here to tell you a little bit more about that. Hi friends, I'm happy to talk with you today about the important ministry that is the In Project. This is a ministry that the United Methodist Church does in collaboration with the government, with ICE, uh, to provide hospitality to people coming across the border looking for asylum and refuge. Um, the coronavirus has presented us with uh, particular challenges, but the ministry continues. Some of the things that they are doing at this point is supporting shelters in Mexico and here in the United States, um, supporting immigrant families and uh, our community uh, with diapers, wipes, and, and formula, uh, participating in uh, different activities, advocating for refugees and asylum seekers, and working with the Border Shelter Network to provide um, uh, our, our families with um, a care and, and love that they definitely need. So it is important for all of us to be a part of this effort. I invite you to give and to give generously uh, so that we can continue to make a difference in these families' uh, lives. Thank you very much. God bless you. Please join us for today's call to worship. I will bless the Lord at all times. God's praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt God's name together. I sought the Lord who answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are those who take refuge in God. Amen. Amen.
we come now to our time of prayer and we begin, begin with a prayer of thanksgiving for the beauty of this day and for the opportunity to be in this space together. Our prayers this morning go to the firefighters and first responders who are fighting fires and other natural disasters, hurricanes, floods, earthquakes. We pray for all of those who are in harm's way. We pray, continue to pray for those who are ill with the novel coronavirus, pray for their recovery and for all those who love them, those who are taking care of them and those who are keeping us safe from harm. So let's center ourselves now for our time of prayer. Let us pray. As we begin a new week, we give thanks. Thanks for this opportunity to gather together in worship, to gather in your name, holy God. We come together as your church, guided by your spirit and strengthened by your love. Lord, we know that you have heard the prayers spoken here. Hear also the silent, private prayers of each heart. We pray for all who are in need of healing and hope, relief and release, care and comfort. Today we give thanks for and celebrate Stephen ministry in this congregation and around the world. We give thanks for your servants who volunteer their time to ministry, minister to those who are in need of help along the way. We give thanks for their caring hearts and loving spirits. As we go forward in this stewardship season, help us to remember that your trust is in us to care for all that you have given us, including our planet and each other. Give us generous hearts and open our spirits to service and discipleship. Hear us now as we pray together the prayer of our Lord. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hello, friends. How are you today? My name is Michelle, and I'm an intern here at Prescott United Methodist Church. And today I bring the children's message. With me, you might recognize her, it's Michaela and she is my daughter. She will be helping me today. So Michaela, tell me, have you ever played Jenga? Yes. Yes? It's a, it's, a, it's a woman named Candy, but she goes by like the Spanish way. It's Dulce. Dulce, oh, okay. And um, can you tell me what are the rules for the game? First of all, I may just show you a piece. This is what the piece looks like. And if you see very closely, if, if you see very closely, you might see the name. Okay, thank you, Michaela. Can, you sh can we show them the, the Jenga game that is behind you? This is how you're supposed to put them. Okay. So there are a bunch of blocks and they are together and when you put them together, they form a tower. So now, Michaela, I know this is not part of the rules, but what would happen if I take the, these two pieces at the very bottom of the tower? Then if there was one piece left, mm -hmm. then it would probably fall down. It would probably fall down. Can we, can we do that? Can we take these two pieces? So I'm gonna take 
this one first, like this, and then, what? So what is gonna happen? It's gonna fall down. You Are know. you sure? Yes. Let's see. It fell down. Yeah. So, <laughs> okay. So, um, did you know that in the Bible, there are 613 rules. Did you know that? Um, no? Okay. So these rules are about the way we are supposed to dress, what we can eat, how to build a church, and there are a lot of rules. But, um, and these are very important because in the past, People follow these rules to keep a good relationship with God and with each other. Relationship? Yes, like uh, to get along with each other and to be good to God. So, in today's Bible story, uh, Jesus was asked, what was the most important rule of all the 613 that there are? I think that's a very hard thing to do, just to pick one from all of these rules. But Jesus had a very smart answer. Jesus said, love God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. But there is a second rule. You should love your neighbor or others as you love yourself. These are the most important rules of them all. Um, and these two rules hold all the other rules in the tower, like we saw it with the Jenga. Mm -hmm. All these rules, I mean, these two rules, the two pieces at the bottom of the Jenga, sustain all the other pieces. Sustain? Yes, that means that keep, keep them together. So, today I want to remind you, my friends, that the most important thing for God is to love God with all of who you are and also to love one another. Okay, my friends, I hope you enjoyed this. And I'll see you next week. Wait, but shall we pray? Oh, yes, that is very true. <laughs> okay, my friends, can you pray with me? Dear God, we thank you for your love and for your patience with us. When we fail to love you and to love one another, Please remind us that you are the most important things in our lives, but also the people that live around us are very important to you. So to love them, to respect them is important to you as well. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray, amen. Amen.
Shortly after the birth of the church at Pentecost, the growing Christian community discovered a need for people to serve this growing faith community in special ways. The apostles selected seven men from among the believers, one of whom was named Stephen. Stephen ministry is rooted in the calling of these helpers in the early church. It's my pleasure today to introduce to you our newest Stephen ministers. These four women have persevered in their training during this year that has been like no other, 2020. They persisted in their training when everything shut down and then when training resumed on Zoom. Altogether, it took eight and a half months, including a hiatus from mid-March to mid-May, to complete the training, but they stuck with it through all. And through it all, Prescott's, Prescott United Methodist's pastoral assistant, Lee Downing, assisted me in the Zoom training sessions, and I thank her for her willingness to serve. Now let me introduce these new Stephen ministers. This is Debbie Savawini, Lois Eaton, Betty Bartley, and Dee Dee Craswell. And I have just given them their new Stephen Ministry badges. Let's continue. Sisters in Christ, you have been equipped to serve as Stephen Ministers at Prescott United Methodist Church. As Jesus took the burdens of the world on his shoulders and has been a friend to you in troubled times, we ask you to be a friend to those who are burdened under the stress of daily life. As the Spirit of Christ has given you gifts for service, we ask you to use your skills and talents to help those people whom you serve and to pray for them. And now I ask these Stephen ministers three questions. Are you prepared to meet those requests that we ask of you? If so, answer yes with the help of God. Yes, yes. With, the with the help of God. God. Are you prepared to nurture the skills you have learned and use them in service to others to support, encourage, build up, and comfort all who are in need? If so, answer yes with the help of God. Yes, yes with, with the help, help of God. God. And are you prepared to serve as Stephen ministers at Prescott United Methodist Church? If so, answer yes with the help of God. Yes, yes with, with the help, help of God. God. And now I ask you, members of Prescott United Methodist Church and members of the Prescott community, to open your hearts to the ministry of these and all of our Stephen ministers and to pray for them that they may be effective servants of Christ. We also ask you to accept their ministry when you need help Allow these individuals to work with you as you face struggles in your life, that you might receive support and help from your brothers and sisters in Christ. And now on behalf of all of our current and former Stephen ministers here at Prescott United Methodist Church, I ask Bob and Beth Peters to come forward as representatives of our Stephen Ministry community to stand with these new Stephen ministers. 
Because you have promised faithfully to serve Jesus and the people as Stephen ministers, I commend you to the care and guidance of the Holy Spirit as you in turn care for others. Work hard, use the skills you have learned so that you might be a blessing to the people you meet and care for. Act boldly and without fear, for God is with you. Now let us pray. Gracious God, you have called these persons to lead us into new paths of caring ministry. Grant them joy in their service and a spirit of bold trust in you that their ministry may stir us to greater caring and more fruitful service. Help us all to be both willing servants and thankful recipients of this ministry through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now go in peace to love and serve the Lord. And on behalf of our congregation and our entire community, we welcome you, our newest Stephen ministers. May God bless you in your service. Our scripture reading for today comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 22, verses 34 through 46. Hear now the word of our Lord. When the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together. And one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. There is, this is the greatest and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Now, while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them this question. What do you think of the Messiah? Whose son is he? They said to him, the son of David. He said to them, how is it then that David by the spirit calls him Lord, saying, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at, the right, sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If David thus call him Lord, how can he be his son? No one was able to give him an answer, nor from that day did anyone dare to ask him any more questions. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I enjoy stewardship time. I need to tell you not all of my clergy friends feel that way about it, but I enjoy it. I've heard people call it things like a necessary evil or my worst favorite time of the year. But I enjoy it because it's a time when we get to put our money where our mouth is. Oh, I know not everyone agrees. I remember one church that I served the congregation size would drop by almost 25% during stewardship season, but I foiled their plans by giving stewardship sermons year round, uh, once a quarter say. I know you were expecting Advent today, but it's stewardship time. One of my favorite stories is about two men that are marooned on a deserted island. They search the island over for any sign of life or anything that can sustain life. And after a couple hours, they come back, find each other and report, I didn't find any water or any food and there's no sign of life anywhere. They both agreed. A couple minutes later, one of the men started to laugh and the other one said, what's so funny? And he says, I just realized that it's stewardship time at my church and I know that they are going to find me. 
It's sometimes that I find humor in this time of year, as I do in most. It's a subject that's so important that we can't be entirely serious about it. It's time to put our money where our mouth is, or more importantly, put our money where our heart is. In Prescott, stewardship is not a struggle. For as many years as anyone can remember, this church has been faithful in their giving. And so as I thought about a way to do it a little bit differently this year, I thought rather than compelling you to give, I might give you reasons that you might not want to give this year. So first, you might not want to give to the church if you just can't afford it. I mean, that's the reality. The economy has become difficult. Some people have lost their jobs. And I never want to be the type of pastor that compels you to give something that you do not have. That's sad to me. I've seen campaigns where they've asked people to take out second mortgages on their house, when they've asked people to make sacrifices, and I don't think any of us need to do that. If you can't afford to give, don't give. We don't want to devour your home. We don't want to take food off your table. But if you have more than you need to, give by, to get by, we'd encourage you to give some of it to the church. Next, you might not want to give if Jesus has become irrelevant to you. Not long ago, I saw a biblical scholar explaining Jesus' words to us uh, to love our enemies, not hate them, to love them. And then the next person that got up to speak said, I'm not sure that I can agree with that. You know, the fact is, as, as Christian people, Jesus' words are challenging to us to love our enemies, to love our neighbors, yeah, even that neighbor. It's tough. And if you no longer think that his words are meaningful today, maybe you might not want to give to the church this year. And third, I would suggest if you believe that the church is no longer God's instrument on earth, you might consider not giving. You know, oftentimes the church becomes little more than a social club to people. And to be honest, that's one of the reasons that I feared that our money would dry up. But you have showed me that you understand that the church is more than that, that the church continues to reach out and make a difference in our community, our nation, and the world that we continue to be God's instrument of justice and goodness to God's creation? If you don't feel that in your heart, though, if you feel that your gift is just coming to pay me or the rest of the staff at the church, I would encourage you not to give. It's Jesus' message for us today is, again, a time when he is challenged by the leaders and the scholars. Tell us, they say, what is the most important of all of the commandments? And Jesus lists two, and he says that they are equal. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, and all your soul. What does that boil down to? It boils down to all that we have and all that we are. We love God with everything that we've got. Using the sports analogy, we leave it on the field. That is our calling. And then maybe the more difficult part of it, as though giving all that we have is not hard enough. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. We know Jesus expands the concept of who neighbor is through telling the story of the Good Samaritan. 
but we don't have to go far to find those people with whom we disagree, those people with whom we would just not as soon have fellowship. Jesus says, especially those people, reach out to that person that you have the least in common with, that makes you worry the most. This is tough, but it is what God calls us to do, to love one another unconditionally and to love God with all that we have. To do any less is a violation of the greatest commandment. So I hope that we found you this stewardship time. I hope that you've received your letter and that you've read it and that you're contemplating your gift for the church for the next year. I hope that you find that we continue to be relevant, that Jesus continues to be a force in your life and the church continues to reach out beyond our own walls. And I wanna tell you that what's really important on that pledge card is not the dollar amount that I will fill in or that you will fill in. What's truly important is our name. Our name and the name of our family members. It's you and me pledging not just only some money that we will give, but pledging to love the Lord our God with all of our heart, mind, and soul, and pledging to love our neighbors as ourselves. May it be so, my friends. Amen. And now receive our benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.